Well, as you know, because we talk about it on this program all the time, we are in a battle for the very soul, and I think the very existence of America as we know it. And if we're going to have any chance of saving her, not only do we have to defeat Barack Obama and every Democrat we see, but we also have to elect true conservatives to every office in front of us in November. I have made it my mission on this program to highlight some of the true conservatives running for office around the country. And joining me on the line right now is one of those true conservatives. Sean B. Latt is a major in the United States Marine Corps. You never leave the Marine Corps. He is also a successful businessman and an American patriot who's now running for Congress in Massachusetts 4th Congressional District, which is southeastern Massachusetts. He'll tell us a little bit about the district here. Um, it's also the district from which uh, Barney Frank is retiring this year and not a moment too soon. But as I said, you know, it's not enough to get rid of these Democrats. It's not enough to get rid of Barney Frank. We've got to replace him with Sean Bielat, who joins me now. Sean, welcome and Semper Fi. Hi, thanks, Monica. Well, it's great. To, yeah, it's great to talk to you. And first of all, before we get into any of the politics here, I've got to thank you for your service in the U.S. Marine Corps, for your service to this great nation and for protecting all of us. God bless. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Let's talk a little bit. Uh, oh, before we talk about some of the issues here, I, I do want to mention your campaign website where everybody can go and, and read about you, find out about you and support you. And I encourage everybody to go do that. His website is Sean, S-E-A-N, SeanForCongress.com. He's also on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, on Twitter, it's at Sean Bielat, B-I-E-L-A-T, at Sean Bielat. All right. Um, so, Sean, when we last talked about two years ago, you were running against Barney Frank in, in this district. And I know the district has changed because of redistricting. But at the time two years ago, you gave Barney Frank a real run for his money. Uh, in fact, so much so that a lot of people say that as a result of that tight race and redistricting, um, which would, would have made uh, his odds even longer here uh, this year against you. Barney Frank decided to retire rather than run again. Do you agree with that? Do you agree that because you were so aggressive and really gave him a run last time that he decided this time, eh, I don't think I'm going to run? Well, I think he didn't want to work for the job. Uh, he's been there for about 30 years. He's no longer chairman of the of the uh, House Financial Services Committee. And I think he didn't want to work for it again. Uh, there hasn't been enough competition in Massachusetts in decades. So a lot of these uh, senior congressmen, they've never really had to fight for their jobs before. And I think it's a really healthy thing that that's starting to happen. What did you learn from the last race two years ago that you're bringing to this one? Well, it was a great opportunity to get out and talk to people around the district and find out more about what they're looking for, what their issues are. And, and one of the things I learned um, is that Massachusetts has a reputation as a very liberal state. And I agree that it's a very democratic state, but it's a lot more conservative than people think it is. The middle class people in Massachusetts hold a lot of the same values that I do, hold a lot of the same values that many Republicans do. And I think we're going to start winning some of those votes. We're talking to Sean Bielad. He's Republican, uh, running in Massachusetts' 4th Congressional District. This is uh, the soon-to-be former Barney Frank District, and everybody should go and, and check Sean out and support him. Um, Sean, this time around, you know, we mentioned last time, two years ago, you were running against Barney Frank, a big liberal lion of the Democrat Party and a really big name. Um, this time around, you're, you're running against uh, somebody with the last name Kennedy, so, uh, first of all, uh, you do have the patience of Job, and you have the perseverance of a U.S. Marine to go first up against Barney Frank and now against a Kennedy. Tell us a little bit about uh, your opponent and how you're strategizing in Massachusetts to run against a Kennedy. Well, besides his last name, I don't actually know much about uh, Joe Kennedy III, um, and neither do most people here in Massachusetts. Uh, he's a younger guy, hasn't really uh, done much. And uh, so he's basically running on his name. And people responded to that in a couple of ways. One, there's the, the core Kennedy supporters who probably are going to vote Democratic no matter what. They're excited about it. And then there's the rest of us who think, you know what, this is America. Uh, seats, congressional seats shouldn't just be passed uh, 
by a single family from one generation to the next. Um, it should be a contest about ideas and between candidates. Do you find as you go around the district, Sean, that people are responding to that, that people have sort of had enough of dynasties? And, and I don't care whether they're Republican or Democrat dynasties, but, you know, it's sort of enough already that there's a sense of entitlement, especially with the Kennedys, that, you know, generation after generation, there are waves of Kennedys that just sort of come up and, and decide, well, this is where I want to stake my claim, this district or this state, and I'm going to go for it and I'm going to win. Um, do you find in talking to people in that district that they're not really they're not all that into it and that they want to judge the candidates based on where they stand and what they believe and what they will do? Well, 84 percent of Americans disapprove of Congress. Uh, the president has a higher disapproval rating than approval rating. And so what that tells you is across the country, people are just sick of what they've got in Washington. They're sick of the leadership they've been seeing or lack thereof, and they're looking for change. And I think here in Massachusetts, when you have the same names over and over and over, year after year after year, if you're not happy with the outcomes, uh, you're going to be interested in change. You're going to be interested in looking at new candidates. You're going to be interested in hearing new ideas. And again, that's what I found as I've gone around the district talking about things like job growth, talking about things like deficit reduction and return to traditional constitutional values. We're talking to Sean Bielat, former United States Marine. He is now running in Massachusetts' 4th Congressional District. Please go to his campaign website, Sean for Congress, S-E-A-N, SeanForCongress.com. Sean, as you uh, go around the district and and, um, and I think I mentioned to you about two years ago when we last spoke that my family is from there. So I know, well, southeastern Massachusetts. Um, what are people telling you about the issues? Is it still all about jobs and the economy? Absolutely. Uh, and that's why you see so much effort from the left to distract from that with social issues. Nobody wants to talk about that stuff. Nobody I'm running into on the campaign trail wants to talk about that. They want to talk about jobs. They want to talk about economic growth. They want to talk about reducing the deficit and the debt long term. They want to talk about the America that we're leaving for the next generation. Those are the things that people care about. Those are the things that they're going to be voting on. And those are the reasons that people are getting out already. We're in, it's in March uh, and we've got a couple hundred active volunteers going out and getting signatures and knocking on doors and sending out mailings. That is a much larger uh, volunteer presence than we had at this point in 2010. So it just shows the level of engagement and the level of excitement to get some change and to focus on the right set of issues, the, the economy, the deficit, and uh, just sort of the, what the role of the, of the federal government should be. And I think I think you just hit on something really important, Sean, which I, I think that this entire election coming up in November is going to center on that one question. What is the proper role of of government, whether it's uh, federal government, state government, local government? It's going to be a sort of a quintessential moment here for the country as to which way we go. And it's going to be at the presidential level and, of course, at the congressional level where you're running. And it's going to be all the way through. And I think I think we can really make uh, the case here, and you're going to be out there on the front lines in your district uh, campaigning, but I think Americans are really um, uh, responsive to this idea that we are at a crossroads in America, and the future of the country is really, literally, going to depend on how we choose in November. That's absolutely right. I think most people, regardless of where they fall on the political spectrum, recognize the need for deficit reduction, uh, which requires, obviously, a, a smaller federal government. Um, but what you're not hearing is alternatives to uh, the solutions that are being presented by Republicans. And until you hear those solutions, I think Americans are going to continue to turn our direction to, to listen to what we have to say, uh, to do agree, disagree a little bit, but have the debate about how we shrink the government, how we uh, reduce our dependency on the federal government and increase local and state uh, control authority over, over issues that we interact with more uh, frequently and on which we can d directly impact policy. If you were in Congress, um, uh, Sean, if you were in Congress today or once you're elected after November, how would you get this economy growing again? Are you for tax reform? Uh, talk to me a little bit about uh, Paul Ryan's budget release this week, and, and it's very similar to the one he released last week about entitlement reform. Um, how would you get the economy growing again to produce jobs? Absolutely. So I think tax, tax reform is one of the two big levers that you need to pull to get there. Um, what you, again, as soon as somebody talks tax reform, people on the left, you start hearing this, oh, tax cuts for the rich. Well, that's not what it's about. It's about tax cuts for job creators, tax cuts for average Americans, uh, allowing people to keep money and 
to determine for themselves where it goes, allowing businesses to use money to best advantage to create jobs and, and growth. That's what we mean when we talk about tax cuts, and, and there shouldn't be this distraction about who gets them and how big they are and whether it's fair. What we need to focus on is, on is growth. It's giving people back their money. It's giving businesses back their money. So that's part one. Part two, though, um, is the regulatory environment. So in addition to just the ever-increasing regulatory burden that's placed on us by the federal government, we have the fact that right now too many people just aren't certain aren't certain what is coming. So as I go around the district and I talk to different people, I hear that over and over. Absolutely. Tax re- reform, and you mentioned the regulatory burden. I assume you're for the full and complete repeal of Obamacare. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's a disaster on so many levels. Amen. 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 And of course, now we're getting um, uh, bigger and bigger reads on what this thing is going to cost us, which uh, I mean, of course, you're, this is the mother of all entitlements. All right. Finally, uh, Sean, before I let you go, uh, one last question uh, on the size of government. We talked about the proper role of government, but the size of it, $15.5 trillion in national debt we rung up as of this week. What happens to America if we don't get our spending and debt under control? Well, it's, it's one of the greatest uh, intergenerational wealth transfers in history. What we're doing is we're putting the, bill, uh, the burden on our children, our children's children, and we're imperiling the, uh, the future of this country, frankly. And so what happens if we don't address it today is our children are, and our grandchildren are going to have to deal with it tomorrow. And that's just not the legacy that we want to leave. That's uh, not consistent with the American dream of each generation doing a little bit better than the previous And so we need to start changing direction today. And I assume once you're elected to Congress, you will be making the hard choices in terms of entitlement reform and spending cuts? Absolutely. Uh, I think think too many people focus on re-election and don't focus on doing what's right. And what's right right now is, is entitlement reform to make sure that we can stay on the uh, the, or to get on the course that we need to get in order to uh, resolve the deficit and debt issues and, and bring us back to where we need to be as a country. Sean Bielat, who is a uh, major in the United States Marine Corps, served his country in uniform in that regard, and now looking to serve his country uh, in the political arena in the House of Representatives. He is running in Massachusetts' 4th Congressional District, which is essentially southeastern Massachusetts. His campaign website, please go and check him out, seanforcongress.com, seanforcongress.com. Also up there on Facebook and Twitter, at Sean Bielat. Sean, you're a joy. Thank you so much, and we wish you well, and we'll have you on again before the election, okay? Great. Thanks, Monica. Appreciate it. Terrific. You bet. Sean Bielat. I'm Monica Crowley, back right after this. 